Hey everyone, welcome back to Rust Admin Academy. On today's video, I'm gonna do a real quick video showing you how to install Carbon onto a brand new Rust server. I know on the video that I put out a couple of weeks ago introducing you to Carbon, I showed you how to install Carbon on a server that previously had Oxide installed on it. So I went through the process of showing you which Oxide files needed to be removed from your server in order for Carbon to actually install onto your server correctly. And the reason why I did it that way is because I made the assumption that anybody that's interested in looking at Carbon probably already had Oxide installed on their server. So today I'm gonna to be showing you what it's like installing Carbon onto a Rust server that has never had any other modding platform put on it. What's up everybody? Welcome back to Rust Admin Academy where I'm teaching you everything that you need to know about owning and operating a successful Rust server. On this channel, I do plug interviews and tutorials. Plus I wanna give you all of the tips and tools that are gonna make your Rust server ownership so much easier. If you're brand new to my channel, consider subscribing so that you stay up to date on everything that we're working on and to get the latest updates on the Rust development world. I'll remind you a couple of times throughout the video to hit that like button if you're enjoying what you're watching. So please remember to do so. All right, let's get on to today's video. All right, so I've already gone ahead and done some stuff in the background, so I don't have to bore you with all of the little details that I've covered in plenty of other videos you can check out on my channel. So basically what we have here is I have a fresh new version of Steam CMD running in its own folder. There's never been a Rust server in this folder before, and I'm gonna show that to you in just a minute. So if you've watched any of my previous videos on how to set up a Rust server, you know that I try to make it so that your Steam CMD folder is in the same folder as your Rust server, but not all mashed together in one folder. So this is what I normally teach you all to do. So you put Steam CMD in its own folder, and then you've got all of your Rust server files in another folder. Those two different folders can obviously be encased into their own folder, which is exactly what I've got going on here. So if we go into my Rust server, you can see that there's absolutely no files in here, but I have gone ahead and pre-made my batch file that I'm gonna use once all of the server files are actually installed. So first things first, obviously we need to actually install those server files. So on the left hand side of the screen, you can see I have Steam CMD opened up. So we're gonna log in anonymous. We're then going to tell Steam CMD where we want the files to actually be installed, which is the Rust server folder that I've set up for this fresh carbon install. And then we need to go ahead and tell Steam to install all of those files. So app underscore update 258550, which as you know, is the application ID for all of the Rust server files. So this is gonna download and install all of the Rust server files that we need for our new server. We'll come back in a minute once this is all done. While we're waiting for that to finish, I'll just show you the batch file that I did make up for this server. So it's you know, this is all fairly basic stuff. You've probably seen all of this before on many of my previous videos. There's really nothing out of the ordinary to notice here. I did put in a small map size because I need it to load quickly for this video. You can obviously put in whatever map size you want. If you're looking for a good map, make sure you explore rustmaps.com to pick a good seed and good map size for your server. Yeah, in fact, here, having a look at it, there's really nothing noteworthy about this batch file. All right, so as you can see on the left-hand side of the screen there, Steam CMD has done everything that it needs to do. And on the right-hand side, you can see all of my Rust server files are now where they need to be. So just to test everything out, we're actually gonna run this batch file just to make sure everything starts up correctly. I'm not expecting to see any complications here, but this is a good time to check it out and fix anything that might come up. And there we go, just like I expected, the server booted up no issue I quickly did a save there just to save all of the files that it created and for right now we're done with that so we can close down this server we're also done with steam cmd therefore we can close down steam cmd as well and now all we're left with is our folder that is housing all of the files that are required for our server including our batch file that you've seen me just run so obviously we want to be installing carbon so head on over to carbonmod.gg I'll put a link to it in the video description down below it's going to take you to this website right here and of course we want to get carbon so click on that button right there and it's going to take you to the code fling page where you can actually download the carbon files click on the green download button and it's going to give you two options one of them is for a windows installation and the other one is for a linux installation obviously we're doing this on a windows machine so we're going to use the windows version and it's going to download in a compressed folder or a zip folder obviously we need to unzip that folder and inside that unzipped folder you're going to end up with three different files now these three different files are what you need to drag and drop into the same folder where your rust server resides and that's installing carbon so on the left hand side of the screen you're going to see my downloads folder that has the unzipped version of the carbon files and on the right hand side of the screen you see the folder that houses all of my rust server files so we're just going to select all of the carbon files and we're going to drag and drop this into our rust server folder it should look something like this and as soon as we're done with that we can restart the server again and you're going to see something different happen it's going to put up somewhat of a graphic showing you that this server is now running carbon you'll see what i mean in just a second so as you can see right there it says carbon at the top in that kind of graphic that's telling you that carbon is actually in 
installed and running properly on this server. And obviously you're gonna see the boot up is gonna look a little bit different than it did before I installed Carbon. It's telling all of the different hooks that it's pulling in. It's also telling you about the different modules that are available in Carbon once you're actually in the server. It's not really important that you understand what's going on here while the server is booting up. Just notice that it's going to be different. It's going to look a little bit different from the first time you started up this server. And as I've talked about in previous videos, any of these yellow warnings that you're seeing, don't worry about any of that. The only ones that you need to really concern yourself with are any of the red warnings that might come up and even not even some of those. And once the server's done booting, you're gonna see down in the bottom left-hand corner there, it's giving you a little bit of information about Carbon, basically just telling you that Carbon is there and it is functioning. So there you go, that's installing Carbon on a fresh Rust server that has never had any UMOD, any Oxide installed on it previously. If that's all you came here to see, if that's all you wanted to see in this video, you can leave this video now. But what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna go in-game and I'm gonna show you what it actually looks like because even the Carbon UI has changed since the last time I recorded a video. So if you wanna see what Carbon looks like now, hang out for a couple more minutes. All right, so now that we're in game and we have auth level two assigned to my Steam 64 ID, we can go in chat, we can do slash C panel. The command for the carbon panel used to be C admin. So it is worth noting that that has now changed. It's now slash C panel, so carbon panel. And that's gonna bring up this beautiful UI. And we just wanna click on the green button right in the middle that says getting started. And so what the team over at Carbon has done now is made it really obvious what you need to do next. So you can just click on these green arrows to the left and to the right. If you wanna go backwards, go left. If you wanna go forwards, go right. And of course, go through and read everything. This is telling you what Carbon is all about, but that's also why I'm making these videos so that you're very well informed about what Carbon is all about. So let's click on the modules tab. Tells you a little bit about what the modules are and what they can do. Let's go into the first one, which is gather manager. And we can decide if we want to be adjusting the gather rate for this server. If we do, we go into the edit config right here and we get to determine what the gather rates are gonna be for this server. So similar to what we've seen on the gather manager plugin, you can just go through and change what you want these variables to be. So quarry is default set at one. Let's say we wanted to make it a five times quarry rate. Let's say we wanted to make it a 10 times excavator rate and maybe a 50 times pickup rate, who knows? If we click over onto page two, you'll see the actual gather rate for hitting trees or nodes. And let's just make that a 10 times, just for argument's sake. I'm not spending a whole bunch of time on these different modules. I'm just showing you how easy it is to edit your way through them. So let's go back to the main page. Let's make sure we enable this right here and then click on save. So now the gather manager module is now active in Carbon. We don't have to install any plugins or anything like that. It's just going to work. We can click next to go to the stack manager. Obviously that allows you to change your stack sizes. The next module is the vanish module. Same thing if you want to change some things in there, you can open up the edit config right there. You can define what it tells you on the screen when you are in vanish mode. You can add a little ghost icon right here because it doesn't come with one. And then of course, if you're actually going to be using this module, you make sure to enable it there and then click on save and we can go into moderation tools. There's an optimization module, which to be totally honest with you, I have no idea what it does, but let's turn it on anyways. I'm gonna touch base with death and find out what the optimizations are. Next one is the rust edit module. So if you're running custom built maps, you would have to have the rust edit module enabled. So we would just click on this button right here to enable the rust edit module. And then once we get through all of the available modules that are currently there right now today, it takes us to the main page that you've seen on the previous video that I made for car. Carbon. Once you're at this page here, you have all of the same controls you have before that deal specifically with Carbon. We still have the player manager section. We still have entities. We still have the built-in permissions manager where we can deal with permissions per player or per group. And then the last option there is obviously the modules. So if we wanted to go back through some of those modules and turn some of them on that we didn't when we were doing the initial setup or maybe turn some off that we decided that we didn't want to use, we can do that right here. All right, future bull here. There is an important detail that I have missed twice now on two different videos. Maybe it wasn't there on the first one. Anyways, I'm excited to show you a specific aspect of the Carbon UI panel that is going to blow your mind. So if you open up your panel, this is what you should see. However, if we go over to modules and go into the admin section and then edit the config for the admin section. And if we turn this check mark off, right here and then hit save. It's gonna bring up this plugins tab right here, right over top of my head. This is going to blow your mind. So once you go into the plugins tab, you have full access to everything that's on code fling as well as everything that's on UMOD. So this is the code fling section right here and this is the UMOD section right here. So we can download 
and configure plugins directly from inside of Carbon. No more dragging and dropping, no more reloading plugins, no more none of that. We have a search functionality. So if you're looking for a specific plugin on UMod or a specific plugin on CodeFlink, just put it in the search bar or you can filter it. You can filter the plugins by price, author, whether they're installed, whether it needs an update. So for example, if you wanted to see what plugins I had installed on this server, I'm gonna change this filter to installed. And now you can see that I have admin radar as well as better chat. So let's say you wanna configure admin radar. Let's go into admin radar and we can edit the config directly from carbon. And here we have all of the different variables that are available within admin radar. You want to change colors of what shows up on your screen when you turn on certain radars. If you want to change the distances that each individual item will render on your radar, you can do that all within the carbon UI. And then of course, once you're done making all of the changes, make sure you go back to the first page, click on save and reload and boom, it's gonna reload that plugin for you. You can close out a carbon and then your functionality of whatever you just changed is now available to you. So let's say we were looking for a specific plugin. Let's say we wanted to add better loot to this server. Well, we can go down to where all these filters are and we can just filter out loot. So anything that has loot in the title is gonna show up and see it shows better loot there available. So let me turn that off and let me just search for better loot and see what it shows you there. It should just show the singular plugin. So there we go. So now we can click on that. And if we actually want to install this plugin on the server, we just click on download. And I can see this happening because I can see my console on the other monitor, but now it's actually installed. If we wanted to go in and edit the configuration file for it, we can do it directly from the panel. So just another really cool quality of life feature that Rawl has built into the Carbon UI. All right, now get back to watching the rest of the video. And just to give you an example of what the plugin installation actually looks like once you're actually using Carbon, this is usually the first plugin that I install on any fresh server that I install. So you can see because I have off level two that my name is actually green in chat. That's obviously a dead giveaway to any of the players that are on your server that you are actually an admin or a moderator on your server. And as you well know, I don't like people knowing that I have any of those capabilities. And one of the tools that I use to disguise myself so that I look like just a regular player is of course, Better Chat. So I've already downloaded the Better Chat plugin. We're gonna go into the Carbon folder and then we're gonna go into the Plugins folder right here. And we're just gonna drag and drop this Better Chat plugin directly into the Plugins folder and watch, you'll see what happens on the console screen. Because we have Script Watchers turned on within Carbon, it automatically installs and compiles that plugin for us. So as you can see there, it says loaded plugin Better Chat, blah, 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 telling you that that Better Chat plugin is actually running on your server. But before Better Chat is actually gonna do what I want it to do, which is make my name in chat look like every other plugin, player in there, we need to make some changes to better chat. So first things first, I'm going to add a group called admin and it successfully added a group called admin. And then I'm going to add myself to that group called admin. And it should say that Spectre is already a member of that group, but let's just see. Yes, it did say that. But now we actually get to determine what it's going to look like when I type in chat. So let's go back into the carbon folder. Let's go into the data folder and let's open up our better chat configuration in the data folder. So as you can see here, we have the default group, which just comes by default as soon as you install better chat. But I've also now added this admin group of which I am now a member of. But what we want to do is we want to hide the fact that I'm a member of this admin group. So we're going to actually change this hidden trigger to true. And we're going to do the same thing on the default group. Click on save for this configuration file. Go back over to our console and type C dot reload better chat. And now we can go back in game. We can do test in chat again, and it should look a little bit different. So now my name is blue, just like it would be if I were a regular default player. Nothing else looks different, but we know that better chat is doing exactly what we need it to do in this specific case. All right, I know this video has run on for a little bit longer than I usually want it to, but I wanted to cover the different aspects when you start getting involved with Carbon. Installing plugins is super duper easy. Initiating the modules that come with Carbon, also super easy. I fully encourage you to check out Carbon if that's something that you want to get into. Of course, if you have any questions about it whatsoever, make sure you let me know in the comment section down below. Don't forget to like this video. Remember to subscribe to stay up to date on everything we're working on. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next video.